Really much tervepä terve again. Today I'm going to show you in the screencast video that how to use the Dynamics 365 portal's OData endpoint. I've done one video blog already about this subject and this will be part two about the same series with a bit differences um, to the first one. So the objectives of today's task is to have a um, navigation button in a portal case form that a user can use to create the new work order from the case. So as you know, the work order entity is from the field service module of uh, Dynamics 365 and case naturally belongs to the service application. So user would create a, a new case and then he has a possibility to create a linked work order from that specific case and in the case edit form. Um, also the objective is to have uh, a few fields in the work order form to be populated automatically based on the derived data from the case. So basically there are certain fields that are similar between the case and work order form. So that's why it would be easier for the end user to have these same data populated from case to the, to the work order. Um, also, there's going to be a linking between the case and the work order. So there is a um, relationship between the case and the work order that is generated already beforehand. And now this link is just populated in this process. And finally, user needs to stay in the work order form after saving that rather than returning back to the case form. And this uh, gives a bit of uh, um, restrictions that what kind of solution can be used here to make this, these objectives. So first of all, I have my Dynamics 365 environment here and I have the field service and service applications already installed and of course the portals application as well. So what I'm going to do first is that I show you how my edit case form looks like in the portal. So I have my portal here available and in the top navigation I have the cases and then when I load the case listing I have the single case edit form here. So there are a few fields there, of course, the customer and case number. And, and then on the bottom part of the page, there are these action buttons. So as you can see, there's already a create linked work order button here. This is just for demoing purposes that what would be the other option of implementing this same objective um, using a um, action button that is available in the portal entity form configurations. So I'm going to demo that first, what it does and how it's configured. I go to the edit case form and once it's loaded, I scroll a bit down and there is this additional settings area. <clears throat> and once it loads, takes a few seconds usually. It's going to take now a couple of seconds for some reason. So I pause this while it gets low. Okay, so now the additional settings uh, section got loaded successfully. And if I scroll a bit down, I have a few buttons there configured already, but there is an option of doing um, create a related record button. And that's what it is in the um, edit case form, which I just showed you. So the configuration here is basically um, saying that which related entity I will be creating from this case form. That's going to be a work order now. And then the relationship between the two entities the target type, which is my entity form here now. And then the current form that I'm using is edit uh, or, or rather the uh, target entity form that's going to be loaded is the edit work order form. 
Um, so th this would work quite okay actually if the end user wouldn't need to stay in the work order form after creating it. So what it does actually, this will throw an error now, but I'll just show you how it works. So if I click this button here, it will open a pop-up window. And then in the background, it will create the relationship between the work order and case automatically. But the two things that were the objectives here, pre-populating the fields of the work order from case entity data, and then the navigation objective for user to stay in the work order form rather than returning back to the case form, it's not doable here with the pop-up window. So what I started to do next is that I uh, will be doing a um, custom button here to the uh, function area and clicking the button would actually um, navigate the user to the work order creation form and then pass certain parameter in the query string um, address um, bar um, so that I can then use that data uh, the query string, string parameter and then fetch the case data from the O data feed. So let's start by um, first checking how a new button can be added to the edit case form. I actually have the um, J script here ready. So um, here is the part where I have the new button and uh, Basically, um, I'll be using the ticket number, meaning the case number as a parameter for the query string. One actually thing before that, um, which I noted and, and ran into an issue. <clears throat> so initially I thought that I will use the primary key of the case entity to load the um, work order data or a case data in the work order form. So if you haven't noticed it, uh, once you are in the portal side and in the edit, edit form in the query string and address bar of the browser, you can see the um, uh, primary key of the entity that you are looking, looking at here in the form. So basically it's a query string parameter named ID and then after that there is the GUID of this case. And here in the code, I was planning to use that. So this piece of uh, code here would fetch the address bar um, query string part. And then I would have the case ID there and use that as a um, query string parameter. And then in the work order form, I would take that and use it as a parameter in the OData query to fetch the um, case entity data. But as mentioned, I ran into a bit of a problem with that. I'm not sure what is actually the underlying reason for that, but I'll demo the problem now for you. So as I mentioned in my previous blog post related to the um, OData feed or OData endpoint of the portals, there is a way to test that in a browser. So if I first use this um, URL here, to fetch the case data by ticket number um, as a parameter. So I should get um, a return back from the, from the browser window and see the case details. So let's see if it works. <clears throat> and as you can see, the um, OData feed returned back the data of my case. There is the incident ID title of the case, um, then the customer account name, the ID of the account, ticket number, and other, other data. So that worked fine. But if I go back to the browser, uh, I mean the uh, URL that I have here, and this in this one I have the incident ID as a parameter. So I will pass the GUID of the uh, case entity as a parameter to the uh, to the query. So we'll see what happens now. I'll open a new um, 
actually I open a new browser tab and let's see now what happens. So it throws an error <clears throat> and um, that is actually something which I didn't find out the reason for that why this happens. It has something to do with the OData feed and how it works. Um, so basically if I use the primary key as a parameter it doesn't return anything even though the incident ID is available here in the feed that gets returned back from the from the API. Well that's it. Uh, I then thought that uh, the next option would be to use the case ID or the case number rather to as a, as a query parameter. So if I go back to the day um, to my code here I have the ticket number as a field in my portal case edit form. So I'll show you that here. This is the case edit form here of the um, uh, of my portal. And as you can see, I have the case number here shown in the in the form itself. And so I'll go, I'm going to use that in the code to pass this one as a parameter to the work order creation form. And the code is very simple. I'll just fetch the uh, value of the ticket number field to a variable, then create the button with certain uh, CSS class and ID, and then finally add a click event for the button and do a window open to the, to the um, URL of my create work order form of the portal, and then do the query string parameter named case number and pass this ticket number variable uh, to the to the URL. So let's copy this data now I mean code here and go back to the browser <coughs> and scroll down to the section where I have the custom JavaScript part and paste the code here. Save the changes go to the portal admin form, clear the cache, back to the edit form of the case and reload it. And once it gets reloaded, I should have the button here in the bottom part of the, of the form. And it says create a linked work order, meaning linking between the work order and the case. So it worked. I have the new button over there. If I click it, I should go or end up to the work order creation form, which I did. And as you can see from the browser address bar, I have my query string parameter there now with the case ticket number shown here in the end of the query string. So what I need to do next is that I need to fetch this uh, ticket number from the address bar uh, in the code and then use the OData feed to query the case from the API, uh, Dynamics API, and finally populate certain fields here in the work order form in the code using that queried case object. So I have that code also available here. <coughs> so here is the part where I fetch the uh, case number from the query string. Then I need to do some uh, string manipulation to take only the case number part of it. And uh, then I do the filtering for the query. So I use the ticket number again uh, uh, as a query parameter and uh, then pass the case number to it. Uh, then the URI of the OData feed, there's the cases feed now, which I have configured already to the cases listing. And then it does the query. And if it's successful, I get the data back. And finally, I um, then use the names of the case entity attributes to, to get the actual values and populate for example, here I populate the service account lookup field of the work order with the proper attributes or, or values. 
Um, one thing to note is that uh, when dealing with the primary keys, the names of the attributes are a bit different or the syntax rather is a bit different. So as you can see here, the uh, variable or object that was returned by the OData feed has the customer ID attribute and the ID contains the actual GUID or key for the customer. But when dealing with the primary key of the entity, it's actually stored directly in the um, incident ID attribute. So there is no um, ID uh, attribute anymore after this one. And the title of the case is actually also directly in this uh, object. There is no other sentence or syntax after that to get the title. That was actually very easy to spot if you didn't know that already by doing a debugging of it in the browser and then looking at this data value object there you can see directly which attributes are available. And then I just populate the service request um, um, attribute with the, with the proper values to get the linking between the case and the work order and and then finally uh, when I click the save in the work order form then the work order new work order should be saved successfully with the proper fields in place or field values in place rather so I copy and paste again the de the code here I go back to my uh, dynamics and to the uh, work order creation form which is uh, here create new work order and then I scroll down again to the section where the custom JavaScript will be entered. Let's see if this loads now within a few seconds or should I pause this one again? Seems to be a bit slow today. Now it's there. So I paste the, the code. And this is exactly the one which we saw in the notepad. I'll save the changes, clear the cache, and go back to the portal side to my case listing. And just to be sure, I hit the magical Control F5 button shortcut to clear the browser side cache and then I go to the to one of the cases here so here is the edit case form again as you can see there is a customer called Coho Winery in this one and here is the case number so what should happen now when I click the create a linked work order button is that this customer value should be populated automatically to the work order service account field and then this case title should be shown in the uh, case field of the work order so let's see what happens I click the button and the work order creation form should get opened and it takes a second or two for the old data feed to load and here we can see that the service account and the case fields were populated automatically. These were the only two fields that I had my code now populating the fields from the case but you get the idea from this one. You can do the rest with the similar similar um, idea. So um, today this was about um, OData feed again related to the Dynamics 365 portals. Um, and I showed you a couple of ways to do a linking between the two entities in the portal. Uh, the second one which I chose here in this one, this part was because of these objectives that I had for my project. So thank you for watching and have a great day.